Hi everybody, Jo here. Thanks for joining me again today. I hope life's treating you well. As always, if not, I'm here to give you a big hug. And do you know what? I think the rest of our lovely little family, our little group on here, will give you a big hug too. So that's just for anybody who needs it. Now today I thought we'd carry on with that sort of male theme and we're going to create a card using some of the new grey board. Now I'm going to be using some cogs, a couple of numbers and um, a clock face. Now as you can see I love these and I've used most of them so I'm sorry I haven't got a full one. I'm at Lavinia again and I'll buy some more. Grey board's fabulous. It's almost like um, a recomposite, a bit like chipboard, but um, more earthy. Beautiful stuff. Sort of good thick cardboard type, but it's it's not solid. It, do you know what? Look up the definition, because it's one of them things I don't know how to. It is almost like pressed together a pulp, but it's like a thicker card and it is just fabulous and um, some products when you go to color it you best put in a, a gesso a, a white um, gesso on first and um, just to help if the water based you don't want the water soaking in it does love water um so a couple of things but loads of different products we sell that you can you can cover it with so just have a play is the best advice have a play so anyway today i've already covered some but I'll show you how I cover mine um, and again lots of different ideas around so this is just how I do mine right so I'm going to file those on the floor now what I've already done is I'm going to bring these in to show you because I've got an idea I thought I'd make a card for um, a male for his 21st so in the middle of, of the clocks you actually get the circle bit of the grey board so I've got one of the circle bits because we're not going to leave those out we need to use those I've got a clock face I've got some cogs or some clock hands which for some reason in my videos I keep calling handles so I'm really sorry if you've picked me up on that I'm so sorry you know I start these videos and I just talk as I'm talking to myself so at times any old rubbish comes out so I do apologize and I thought with the numbers now the numbers are ideal for birthdays now this obviously I'm going for a 21st but you could always put the year you know if it was say like I don't know a, a 28th birthday and you didn't want to put 28 you could put the year that the, the person was born that's a nice touch um so that's what I'm thinking and that's what I've got so I'll just quickly show you how I've coloured these and then we'll get on to making a background. So here's my cog. Now I'm going to be using the metallic gilding polishes and very simply, I'm not going to use the applicator in the top for this. I'm going to use one of my beautiful Lavinia brushes and this is the bigger one. And this is the one I've put down as being my gilding polish brush. They do wash clean, but in my head, I just like to keep them for specific uses. And that's probably just says more about me. Anyway, I'm just going to paint. And again, I tend to keep the, the cog in my hand just so that I don't get as much polish on my mat and, and waste it. Because you know what I'm like. I try to be as thrifty as I can. And again, you can catch the edges, look. It's very simple, very quick to do. Right, that's lovely. And I'm going to pop that in my water pot to the side. Now, before I put the lid on, remember, night-night routine. Spritz it twice, night-night. Just stop it drying up. Same with your applicator. And that one, by the way, was the copper shine. But I want to add a bit of... I want to go for a... a like a... Um, verdigris type feel so I want to introduce a bit of the green and this is the lime burst now I'm just going to dab a little bit off the side here with my finger and while it's still wet I'm just going to add almost like a bit of as I say a verdigris effect now again I, you could use the brush but I find I can just almost smudge it and you see how you're getting that that bit of green let's take that bit from in there now you can do this with lots of different colours. I just wanted to bring in a, a sort of a greeny tone. And again, I'm just going to pick up a bit from the side, from the lid. There we go. And I'll pop that to one side to dry. And just give my finger a bit of a wipe. 
and then do the usual night 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 lid on and, and these are fabulous ready to go next time perfect and we'll move that now so while they're drying I'm going to create a background and this is a great way of creating a general background for a mail card this is multifarious five and a half inches the idea that it's going to go on a six by six card blank and I'm going to start with again because I'm thinking of that vintage but verdigris I've gone for twisted citron in the oxide vintage photo and ground espresso now the technique I'm going to use is the director paper technique DTP for short and it works better with a square ink pad just in my opinion so I don't use my elements for this this is why I'm using the oxides and all I'm going to do is hold and I've done this a few times before it's one of my favorite techniques hold it at 45 degrees and drag across the card make sure you start off the card if you start on the card you'll have a line and depending at the angle, obviously the flatter you have the ink pad, the more ink you'll get on because it'll be going flat. If I show you, so if I pull it flat, look, you get more. The more angle, the less ink you get, if that makes sense. So I've just turned mine round and because I'm thinking of almost um, a wood panelling, I'm only going in one direction. I'm not going across. We'll have a little bit more green along that edge and then I'm going to come in now with the vintage photo and the same thing and I almost want to try and keep the edges there we go turn it round and I just want to keep the edge if I can similar to almost there we go And then you've already got that sort of wood plank, wood grain. Great if you need a quick background. And then what we'll do, we'll just add a little bit more ink around the edge. But also just uses up. And I'm keeping with the same colour for the minute. And what you can do is just drag some down where you've got those and some up. Now what I will do is add a little bit of the darker, so we'll come in with the ground espresso and just add a little bit more on these corners, just for a bit more oomph. Right, we can always add some more, we're just building up this background. Now we've got this ink on our mat here, so we'll spritz it to clean it. But rather than mop it up straight away, we can actually mop a little bit up on our work and swipe it through if you want. Right, we'll leave that with that. And now we can just clean this up. Again, if you've got another piece of card, you could use that. When I'm doing the videos, I tend to just keep it to... The project I'm doing but at home you could take your time and do another lovely swoosh background on a card now look at this I love the way this is drying so we'll just add a couple more splats just because we can and then we'll dry this off just with our heat tool and this is the ranger heat tool so sorry about the noise if I want to speed up the drying, quite often I just sort of whack it with Mr Inky Binky and keep drying. That's just the way I work. And again, heat from front and back. It'll help keep it nice and flat. Right, see how it curls up, turn it over. Let's just flatten it off. There we go. Right, so what I'm going to do now is add some little scores in it with my scoreboard. And again, this is an old technique. Lots of people have done this. Um, you can do the score scoring first if you want. I like to do mine at this point. I just... For me, I just find it better. And you can do 
at the whichever intervals you want. So I'm going there, there. So I'm just going to do every other one. But totally up to you. You can decide. You can place it. I'm going to pop that back down there. And now what I tend to do is just sort of bend them slightly. It just gives them a little bit more so you can see where they are. But the best trick is what I love to do now is come in with my pastel pencils. And I'm going to use three out of my set here. I need the white, the dark brown, and then we've got a couple of... Shall we go ready brown? Oh yeah, let's introduce a bit of ready brown. And I also need, from behind me, biodegradable cotton bud. Just to smooth things and smudge things. You can use your finger, but I'm trying to be good today. Right, sleeves up, you can tell I'm, I mean business. So where I can see the groove look, just going to come in with my pastel, my pencil. And again, I'm not being over neat. Let me see, there's one there. One there. And sometimes I sort of, let me feel, one there. Go off a little bit, a little bit extra at the edge, maybe here, maybe here. And the first time you do it, I'm just going to smudge this now. The first time you do it, you'll probably be a bit careful. I know I was. And then the more I've done it and the more I've seen the effect, I've almost enjoyed it so much. I've done a bit extra and, and it looks better. The first one I did, I was almost quite scared of what it would look like. And you see how it starts to build up. So we'll add a bit of, just in various places now, I'm just going to come in with a bit of the other colour look and just smudge it in. You, you know what wood's like? It does have grains and lots of different knots. And Now, again, you will take your time, spend longer. Just remember to smudge it. And again, you've got two ends on your cotton bud. So you want a bit, a bit more there, don't we? And I'll put a bit more of this colour. Put the two together. Oh, that looks better, yeah. Smudge it across. That one's a bit, a bit more at the end. And it's just a lovely way of darkening the grooves in the wood. Now, the reason I got the white out as well is what I've found is if you add white in places, you see how it just gives another, makes it look more like it's that lovely wood grain and like you've got some highlights all around there, look, where we've got that shape. That would look nice. And it's just about building up to make it look. And I, th I think that looks fabulous. And again, as I say, you can take a lot longer. And just take your time playing. You know, you could add some yellow if you wanted. I mean, if I wanted to bring in that green, because we've almost lost it in bits. Look, we've got the lovely citrusy green there. We could bring back some little of the green areas. So maybe up here, look. Just add it, and again, just smudge it because it's your pastel pencil and smudging it will fix it but also just enhance that effect. If we just put some here where it's run, look. And so to me, I think, can you see, just bringing that little hint of green has brought that back. So that's your fabulous pastel pencils. Now, the other thing I want to do, a little bit of stamping, and I've got my stamp, and it's the Texture One stamp. And I'm just going to do this organically, so not put it on a, on a block. And we're just going to roll some first and second generation. Just, I'm not going to overcook it. I don't want it everywhere. Just in a few places. That's just one more there. Right, stop. Mrs. Rice, walk away. 
and that was with the Versafine Claire the Pine Cone just because with it being brown I just think it keeps to those lovely tones because after all we're just making a background now I'm thinking I might just add and, and this depends how you feel for me I'm thinking I might just add a little bit more ground espresso around the edge so this is my darker colour I just think just to darken it off a little bit I just think it frames it Now again, if you want to vintage that up, get your fan brush, come back in and add a bit more water flicks just around that edge where you've added the ink. And this, I love this process of building up a background like this. And for me, all these bits here, you can use or not use. So to be honest, it depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes I'll add the extra ink around the edge. Sometimes I add the extra water splats. Honestly, depends how I feel. Just how I feel on the day. But they're all things that you can decide whether to add or not to add. And if I put this here, can you see how it's starting to just do that bleaching, full bleaching around the edge? And I almost don't want it too white. So I'll come in with the heat tool again. So sorry about the noise. We'll dab that one off there because that's quite wet. Oh, look at the back of it. Fabulous. <laughs> and all in all, this is just a great background. Now, I'm using it specifically with the idea of a man's card today. But if you had a friend that was into gardening, again, you could almost make it look like trellis. What about adding a bit of the brick wall stencil? So many ideas. And that's what I'm here for, just to, you know, wet that crafty appetite, get those crafty juices flowing. So my idea is, I've got my pieces, I'm going to get all my pieces here. And I've got a little idea in mind. And what I'm thinking is, I'm going to put my clock face on here. But I'm thinking of popping one of these from our sticker sheet. I think this is number five. I've started to write the number on the back. Now, I'm wondering if, if I pop this in the middle, oh, it's just started raining outside. And let's put 12 with 12. Oh, that fits really well, doesn't it? That was a stroke look. I was hoping it would. I like that. And so my idea is I'm thinking of putting this on here, my number and some cogs. So let's make this up first. Now, Again, I'm using the Bippity Boppity glue. It dries clear. And I tend to use my finger just to sort of smudge it all across. Make sure I've got a good covering. As I say, it will dry clear. And it gives me that little bit, let me turn this round, that little bit of wiggle time. So let's add the 12 and the 6. I may just need to pop my head over slightly. Right, I think that's pretty. Gosh, you can really hear the rain. Now we need a bit more glue. So good job, it's not time to take Eric out. Now, if you had a specific time, if somebody was, you know, the birthday, if you knew what time they were born, or you could do this sort of thing, say for a wedding, using the clock, and if you knew what time the wedding was going to be. I mean, there are so many possibilities with these clocks. I think they're great for retirements. Right. So, oh, oh, there we go. How effective is that? Now, you could put some glossy accents on as well if you want, or some clear embossing powder. But I'm thinking we'll put that there gonna wipe my hands because obviously they're a bit sticky 
Let's pop this in the middle so you can see. Now I've got three cogs and my idea is to have my three cogs in this corner, my 21 here and on my sentiments we've got it's a blast. So I wondered about, I'm thinking the 21st, oh you could put, <laughs> if it was a retirement maybe vintage. Um, or I could just leave it and then stamp my happy birthday. See, I'm not sure. I think it's a blast. I might put it's a blast because, you know, I think a 21st, it's definitely going to be a blast. So, I'll add some glue on here. And again, with my finger, I'm just going to smudge it right around the edges. We'll pop that there and we'll get our 21, like I say, any age, this is going to be perfect, isn't it? 21A. So I wonder if any of you listening are 21. Oh, I'm, I'm obviously not 21 or two times 21. And again, we've got different size numbers, but I just thought that size was perfect for this card. So a bit of the bippity boppity, which I have been practicing. So I impressed, I'm, I'm trying to say it because you know what I'm like. And then the smaller cog, just gonna put that one up there and then one more, I think three, obviously we like our odd numbers, don't we? We'll pop this one down here. And then most important thing, give your fingers a bit of a wipe because after smudging that glue on the back of those grey board, I mean the beauty of grey board is because it's not very heavy, it's a light constitute. Um, so it doesn't add a lot of weight if you're thinking of posting your card. So I've got to be honest, I think that is lovely. Now for me, I'm going to add some white splats. Now I know the white splats aren't everyone's cup of tea. So if you don't like the white splats, leave them off. I just, because I've got my white there, And we've got a few little ones, look. And then I'm going to see if I can do a flick. Oh, yeah. So I like to, for me, tap with my Posca to get little flick. And then a bit of a whip sort of action to get larger splats. But I do just need, as you can see, they do go right across my table. So we'll... Little tip, always make sure the lid is on your ink pad before you do any Posca splats. And I want my It's a Blast. Just find my scissors. Oh, I think it looks nice there, don't you? You see, again, here it's almost doesn't balance at the top. No, I don't like it there. I think it just nestled in there. right across there yeah i think that's lovely so i hope you've enjoyed that as soon as that's dry and then it'll be a little bit flatter i'm going to pop that on a six by six card blank but there's so many different things there there's the background there's using your your stickers your sentiment stickers along with your clock pieces remember your numbers for dates for ages and these beautiful absolutely gorgeous cogs so a lot of things there that we can use. I hope you have fun with them. Any questions, just ask. You know I'm here to help. And it's lovely to have such fabulous new crafters joining us as well. It's always so exciting when we get new crafters. So welcome to the family, everybody. All right, you take care. I'll see you again soon. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.